Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Christine's Stamping Spot and I have a super easy, fun, quick, bright and cheerful card to share with you guys today using a brand new stamp set from Stampin' Up! The brand new Stampin' Up! catalog was just released on June 1st of this year, 2018 and this card was made using the Abstract Impressions um, stamp set as well as some other items from the suite that this stamp set is part of. What I mean by that is Stampin' Up! breaks their catalogs down into different suites um, which basically just means kind of themes, you know, things that go together in the catalog, coordinating papers, ribbons, theme, etc. that all go together. So this is the page that the Abstract Impressions stamp set is on. It is page 129 of the catalog. I'm not going to be using the thinlets today. They're called the Springtime Impressions thinlets, but um, they are beautiful and they will be in my class that I will be doing my online class, which will be coming up very soon. Um, you do save 10% if you buy these the stamp set and the thinlets together as a bundle. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Don't buy anything if you wanna take my class. I'll have a video tomorrow sharing for you all of the um, supplies that you will be getting as a free gift from me for taking the online class. You will be getting the supplies to make six cards, two of each of three designs, and you will also be getting uh, envelopes to go with the cards. And then you will also have access to exclusive videos that will be set private just for those of you who have paid for the class. And then of course you, you will be paying for the stamp set and bundle and then whatever other supplies go into the class. I haven't completely finished planning it out yet. That is tonight's assignment, um, but it will all be explained in great detail in tomorrow's video. So let's get started on today's super simple card. All right, so again, here it is. It's just a cute, easy to put together card. This would be a great um, thank you card for someone or just a, even just a thinking of you or just being appreciative of someone. Very simple to do. Now, what I wanna do first is show you how the stamp set works in terms of the stamping. This is a two-step stamping stamp set. And what that simply means is that you are, will be layering right over top of a particular image, another image that coordinates with it. And then you'll layer on top of that another image, a separate image, and just different gradations of color. So you get something that looks like this, like the flowers here and the leaves as your finished product. Really, really, really cool. So we're gonna go over how to do that today. What you will need to complete this card is of course the Abstract Impressions stamp set. You will need the pinks that I used are Flirty Flamingo and Melon Mambo. The greens that I used for the leaves are Garden Green and a brand new color, Granny Apple Green. This is not a new in color. Stampin' Up! has done a complete color revamp. So this is a new uh, standard color that is in our Brights collection and it is wonderful. And then for the blue flowers, I use Bermuda Bay and Pacific Point. Now, if you don't have all of these colors, please don't worry about it. You can easily do this technique with fewer colors and just stamp off. And I will show you what I mean by that in just a minute because for the pink flower, we're going to do a little bit of that. We're not using three different colors for the pink flower. We're using only two, but three different stamps. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. The other supplies that she will need to complete this card is a black memento ink pad for the sentiment. I just kind of wanted that sentiment to stand out. So I did it in black some rhinestones that I put in the centers of the flowers and then just a few around the card for some bling, some designer series paper, and this is a part of the suite, the Abstract Impressions uh, suite, and it is called Garden Impressions 6x6 six six paper. Let me show you that quickly here. This is the paper pack that you get, and it is absolutely beautiful. The papers in this are simply stunning. It's kind of hard to cut into them, frankly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they're very beautiful and coordinate very nicely with this stamp set as well as the coordinating thinlet dies. And then the last thing you will need is some white, uh, Whisper White Baker's Twine. 
All right, now let's get to the cardstock that you will need. The first thing you will need is Whisper White cardstock for the stamping panel, a uh, standard A2 size card uh, uh, card base in thick Whisper White, and then a piece here of Bermuda Bay. And we will go over the measurements uh, as we go through the card, and they will also be on my blog. And I will have a link to my blog in the description box of this video below. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do all of our stamping and get that all done with. And then it's just a matter of simply putting the card together after that. This is really simple and I think you guys will really like it. So I have all the supplies already pre-cut. Again, this is a standard A2 size thick card base. So it measures five and a half by four and a quarter once folded. And I've gone ahead and scored that already. The design paper is cut at five and a quarter by four. The Whisper White stamping panel is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And the Bermuda Bay cardstock to, to lay behind the stamping panel is four and a half by three and a half. So very simple, very, very, very simple. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is bring over some scratch paper. I just like to put some scratch paper down. This is Stampin' Up! grid paper. It folds out very large. It's great to cover your workspace with. And I also have a little piece of foam here. When you're working with photopolymer stamp sets like these, um, which are the clear sets, they don't have the cushion that the red rubber stamp sets have. So it's really, uh, I always recommend that folks use some type of cushioning underneath the, the, the surface that they will be stamping on. And that just gives a little bit of extra cushioning to the stamp and helps you get a better impression. Um, you can use a mouse pad. You can use a catalog even um, if, if you want to. I just have, like I said, a little piece of foam. You can use craft foam, anything like that. So like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment first. So we get that out of the way and then we know where to place our flowers around it. You could definitely do it the other way around and just plan accordingly for the sentiment, but I'm not that neat of a stamper, so sometimes I, uh, I have to extra plan ahead or else I'm going to mess it up. So I'm just inking up that Memento Black ink. Again, these are photopolymer stamps, which when we do our two-step stamping in a minute, it's going to make it so much easier. But you can see right through the stamp so you know exactly where you're placing it. So I'm going to stamp it down, put some even pressure, press down evenly on top of my acrylic block, lift it up and voila, very beautiful sentiment there. I love this font too and it says of course kindness changes everything. Now I have my stamp and scrub off camera here so I'm just going to quickly clean this stamp because I'm going to be using this block again for the, um, the uh, flowers. Okay, so here are the three different flowers that we have for the large flower that I did in pink on my card. And the way that you want to do them is you just start from left to right. So you stamp this image first and, you're, and you also are going from lightest color to darkest color. So left to right, lightest color to darkest color. You could obviously do this whatever way you're comfortable with. If you want to do it in the reverse, you can do that. This just works best for me. So this is the way that I'm going to show you today. But do what works best for you. I've had the best results though by doing it this way. So I'm going to be stamping this image first and my lightest color ink, then this one, then this one. And that is going to give us our uh, beautiful pink flower. So let me just close up my memento quickly. And now I'm going to bring out the flirty flamingo. This was an ink color from last year that has now carried over into the new catalog as one of our core colors in our brights collection. And I was very excited about that because I really loved that color. So I'm going to get this base stamp, the first stamp we're going to stamp, nice and inky. And then I am going to stamp off. What that means is I have my scratch paper here. I'm going to first stamp the image on the scrap paper. And then I'm going to stamp it down in the corner here with a little bit of it off the paper. And again, that's why we have this scratch paper down here. And I'm just going to hold it and apply some even pressure and then lift it up. Now stamping up inks are wonderful. Sometimes when you stamp them, it might not look like you got even coverage at first, 
but if you just let that sit for just a moment, it's going to smooth out and absorb into the paper and you're going to have a beautiful image. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my other two just so I know placement wise where these big flowers are going to be. Does it matter? I'm just going to kind of position them around my sentiment. There's no right or wrong way to, uh, to do this. Wherever you feel like placing your flowers is perfectly fine. So there's that one. Remember I stamped off stamping off one more time and I'm going to put this one here and notice I'm kind of turning the flower a little bit each time so they're not all facing the same direction just to give it a little bit of interest. Next I'm going to take the second image which is the thinnest of the lines of the flowers. Again it's that middle one on the cover of the stamp set and this time we're going to use Flirty Flamingo again but we are going to use it full-on strength so we're not going to stamp off in other words now let me show you this very quickly this image this stamp set rather is great because you don't have to worry too much about where you're uh, placing it sometimes with two-step stamping you really have to concern yourself with lining it up perfectly in order to get the perfect placement of your image this is an abstract stamp set so by definition it really doesn't matter a whole lot but if you do take a look at the little packaging and i have the next stamps we're going to be using kind of on the outside ready to go for the video so it doesn't look the most professional but you can see here and i'll pull it up to the camera there's a little arrow it's like a little top of an arrow on each of the three designs that make up the flower and that just kind of shows you how to line it up let me show you though the way that i have figured out i just kind of ignored that and uh, stamp it wherever i want but if lining it up really matters to you Notice here, there's this little piece, little tiny piece right here. And I'm talking about this piece right here, right there. There's a little piece like that on each image. So this one here, I'm sorry, this one here is what it, the little one on this image. And that, I just line those up and it turns out perfectly every time. But again, it really does not matter. So again, you can see right through this because these are photopolymer, stamp it down and you're done. See, isn't that pretty? Now this one I stamped partly off the paper, so I'm just kind of going to guess and just stamp it down. Very pretty. Again, you do not have to stress over lining these stamps up. That little tip about just following the, the smallest one and putting the smallest one in works great. But you don't even have to worry about that, honestly. It looks great no matter which way you stamp it. I've played with this set all day and it really does. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put it. So now I'm going to bring out the Melon Mambo, which is our darkest color. So now we've gone from lightest to darkest. We've done the Flirty Flamingo stamped off, then Flirty Flamingo full strength, and now we're going to do Melon Mambo with using this third and final stamp set that makes up our big flower, or stamp rather, not stamp set, that makes up the big flower in the stamp set. Now you can leave it like this if you wanted. You don't have to use, that's the beauty of these, uh, the stamp set and these stamps. You don't have to use all of the images if you don't want to. You know, it's you can really make it your own design. I really love for this card the way that this looks, so I'm gonna use all three. Now look how dark that is, and this is what I was meaning uh, to talk about a few minutes ago when I was talking about the Stampin' Up! ink itself. That looks super dark, right? Well, this ink is going to settle. It's going to seep into the paper and evenly distribute out. So eventually when it dries, it's going to look like this on this finished card here. And, and just so you know, so you can see that that's not a fluke. Here are other ones that I've played with today where you can see the same thing. Well, there's one anyway, where it really does eventually even out and it's not quite so bright in your face. So keep that in mind when you're stamping. Don't think, oh my gosh, I've ruined my project. Just give it a minute to, um, to, um, you know, dry first and see if that color smooths out, smooths out for you before you worry about maybe having to start again, because I think you'll probably find that the results turned out greater than you thought they would. All right, so we are done with our pink inks. Those are our big flowers completed. Now we're going to do our leaves. The leaves come in two, uh, two different steps. Let me show you on the box. This is your first step. And again, you're going the way that I do it. And I have found that I get the best results is you do your lightest color first, then your darkest. So I'm doing this one in the Granny Apple Green, which is our new green color. And then this one in garden green, which is my darker green color of the two. 
And all I'm going to do is place these leaves, as you can see on the finished card, randomly around the three different flowers. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me show you how I do that. I'm going to take my lightest color first, which is the Granny Apple Green. These are our new ink pads. This is a new color, and all of the ink pads have also been redesigned. I really like these new ink pads. They're fantastic. I'm going to slowly build my collection up over time, but I am going to be getting all of the new colors because they're fabulous. All right, so we're just going to stamp this again, just kind of randomly. I hope my head's not in this shot. Sorry about that. If it is, please don't count my gray hair. <laughs> All right, so there's that one, and then I'm going to turn it over. I like to kind of turn it, that you, as you can see, hopefully you can see in the stamp set. Let me bring the box back over. There's a little, ah, there's a little notch on each end of the leaf here, which kind of helps you determine, hey, which way do I want to turn this? So it looks like this leaf belongs on this side of the flower now. So you'll see me kind of turning the leaf around. That's why I'm doing that, just so you know. All right, this little leaf's going to go right here. And it's totally okay to stamp some of them off the paper. I think it gives it a really great look. And that's why we have our scratch paper, right? So we're not worried about that. Now I'm gonna put this one oh, here-ish. And then this one is gonna go on the side right here. Okay, so we are done with that particular leaf. Now we're going to bring in the other step, which again is super, super easy. The leaf is probably the easiest part, quite honestly. I've got these stuck together here. Okay, here we go. So we're going to put away our granny apple green and bring out our garden green, which is our darkest color. All right. And then we are just going to stamp this inside of what we have just stamped down. And I like the longer side to go on the side where the notch is at the top. So you'll kind of see me turning my stamp around a little bit. At times, that's what I'm doing. But it really doesn't matter. Again, you don't have to worry about that stuff with this particular stamp set. It's abstract and quite beautiful and does not matter where you're placing stuff. It really doesn't. How are we doing here? This is, and I apologize for the length of this video, but I really wanted to give you a good idea of what this stamp set is all about since I'm going to be doing an online class on this stamp set. Tomorrow I'll have all the information on that. Um, and so I really want you to be able to see the set in action so you can decide if this is a particular class that you would be interested in. Finally, we're going to be stamping the two little flowers, the little flowers, and there's two parts to those, this one and this one. Dark, the, the more solid image is going to be your lightest color. So again, from left to right, lightest, darkest. Our lightest color for this is the Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to go ahead and open that ink pad up, grab my stamp and stick it to my block here, ink that up, and I'm just going to stamp this little stamp wherever I want, no right or wrong. It's probably gonna be hard to make every card look exactly the same because we're just playing around with this. We're not worried. We don't have a sort of a formula or structure uh, in, in pl you know, planned out in doing a card like this. The idea is to just have some fun and make a pretty bright summery kind of card. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that really quick on my Stampin' Scrub and then I'm gonna grab the second part, close up our Bermuda Bay, and then we're gonna grab our Pacific Point, which again is our darkest. We will then just stamp that randomly in the center of this little set. And this one's barely on the paper, so there's not going to be much of that one showing. Okay, guys, that is it for our stamping. How easy was that? It takes a little bit of time just because I had to open all of the different ink pads. But see how you could do this with just one color for each. Really, I mean, you could just do two steps of the big flower if you wanted to and do Flirty Flamingo stamped off and then Flirty Flamingo and then Granny Apple Green stamped off and then Granny Apple Green. See what I mean? So hopefully that makes sense. So don't think you have to go out and buy all of the ink pad colors in order to make this particular, you know, in order to utilize rather this particular stamp set. You really can use the stamp off technique and be very successful with it. Okay, the next step, I want to go ahead and I'm going to set this aside for just a minute. Just let it dry for just a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and using my snail adhere my 
pretty design paper here to the front of the thick whisper white card base. So I'm just going to open it up and center it nice and pretty on the front of the card base. I really like the thick whisper white for my card bases. It really holds up very well and uh, it allows your cards to kind of sit up and be displayed a lot easier than uh, the, the thinner cardstock. Okay, our next step is I'm going to go ahead and bring this back over and we're going to go ahead and adhere now our stamped panel to the little Bermuda Bay panel. So we're just going to use our snail to do that. Okay, I think we're done with our snail. No, we're not. We've got one more thing to do with the snail. So just center this on top of your Bermuda Bay cardstock. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of snail along the back here and along each, so in other words, each side on the back, I've put some snail adhesive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white baker's twine, whisper white baker's twine. I'm going to turn this card back over and I'm just going to stick it down one end down to some of the snail that I have laid down there. And then I'm going to wrap it around one, stick it down, two, stick it down, stick it down on this side, three, stick it down, and then just use my paper snips and trim it off. Super easy, and look at the cute little design you have on the front. Now I'm going to pull this down just a little bit, and you can fiddle with it to get it exactly where you want it to go. There you go. That's how I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and I am going to kind of load the back of this with some Stampin' Dimensionals because I really want this top panel to pop off the card a little bit. Just give it a little bit of dimension. So now let's go ahead and remove the backing. All of these little pieces. I find the backings of these stamping dimensionals everywhere. They're on the cats, they're on the kids. <laughs> they're everywhere. So I try to grab them all and throw them away real quick. Okay, now we're just going to pick this back up and then center it on top of our card base in the middle of that designer paper. There we go, that looks lovely. And then our very last step, guys, is to take some Stampin' Up rhinestones. These are basic jewels rhinestones. They come in three different sizes. We're going to use the biggest and the second biggest for this card. I'm going to use the biggest to put in the center of the three large flowers. And I'm just going to kind of split this open a little bit with this uh, baker's twine. There we go. And then I'm going to take the medium size to put in the middle of the little blue flowers like so. And then I'm going to take a large one and put it right here. I'm going to take a medium one and this is just for fun. I just love a little bit of bling in my cards so I'm just putting these randomly wherever I want to. And I'm going to take one more big one and put it here. I, and there you go guys that is the finished card and as you can see I found the other one I wanted to show you earlier just to show you that the color really does even out these were just little panels I was playing around with earlier and then um, here is the card that I showed at the beginning of the video and then here's the card we just completed and I just think it turns out really really beautiful the the rose red will calm down just a little bit more when it is completely dry and will look just like this so it blends in just a little bit more so again don't be upset if you know give your inks a few minutes to kind of set and seep into that paper all right guys so this is a look at the abstract impression stamp set in action there are many other images on the stamp set like the grasses with the tops of the flowers here the butterfly and we will be using every stamp in this set in our class the online class so please check back tomorrow for a um a video on what the class will entail, how much it costs, what you get from me for free, that kind of thing. Don't forget that if you place an order from me in my online store, you will uh, receive a catalog for free. And if you order over $50, $50 or more of merchandise, I will give you a complete 
obviously not one that I've used, a complete unopened package of the uh, Brinestone Basic Jewels, as that's my June promotion for this month. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for hanging in there with me for this super long video. I promise this is a very simple card to create. It just takes a little bit of time because I use so many different colors. But again, as we've kind of talked about throughout this video, you don't have to use so many uh, ink pads in order to get the job done. Very cute. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and I will catch you tomorrow with the informational video on the class. Have a great day. Bye-bye.